And so we're excited about tonight. Um, we give God praise for the opportunity, amen, to dive into the word. Um, I know the woman of God has been talking about faith, amen, concerning um, the last two nights, very powerful, very impactful. And um, I feel like it's very important to stay um, in the same vein. Um, so um, we're going to stay in that same vein concerning that. Um, but I want to start with this concerning uh, faith. We're still talking about faith. But our mind, right, I want to, to capture this. Our mind is the battleground where wars are fought and lost. We must not allow passing thoughts from the enemy to lodge there. Faith will not work unless we control our thoughts, right? So we must pull down and cast that out negative thoughts. Amen. Can somebody please mute the phone out here? Some, um, some people are talking a little bit in the background. If you will, you can put star six on your phone or mute your phone. I appreciate it. So I'm going to say that again. Our mind is the battleground where wars are fought and lost. We must not allow passing thoughts from the enemy to lodge there. Because if we do, faith will not work unless we can control our thoughts. Now, that may sound simple, but in 2 Corinthians, if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, I'm going to read verse 3 to 5, right? And this is what it says. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Why? What are we doing? Verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Many times the reason why it's hard for us to activate our faith is because of the imaginations we allow the enemy to continue to allow our minds to have. Negative thoughts, uh, thoughts that are impure, uh, thoughts that are of doubt, thoughts of, well, you know what, I don't know if I can do it. Um, thoughts of, well, I, I guess this is, a, this is as far as I can go. I don't think that I'm strong enough to achieve it. Where I guess this is where God wants me to be. Uh, where I don't believe God, I heard what you said, but right now, God, I can't do it. Those thoughts come from imaginations that are in our mind, right? And if we're not pulling down the imaginations of our mind that the enemy keep reminding us of, or the enemy keep bringing to our thought process, it would be hard for us to move in a place of faith. And so sometimes this is what, what limits us from moving in faith the way God wants us to because of the imaginations in our minds or the thoughts we have not pulled down to make us not come in agreement with what he says because it looks impossible. I don't think I could do it. Where, see, I'm a woman. If I was a man, maybe uh, if God made me the senior leader, oh, well, I came from a poverty background. Well, I don't know. I don't have enough education. There are, there are thoughts in our minds that already defeat us before we can even move forward. Remember, the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. So there are strongholds we've got to pull down before our faith can be activated. It begins to bring a blockage. It begins to bring hindrances from our past of things in the flesh that we didn't achieve or things in the flesh that's not pleasing to God. Like the woman of God said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So, so because of our thought process it is, uh, and, and our flesh and the barriers in our minds, it's hard for us to push out to a place that we uh, uh, can't believe God in. So before I can really activate the faith or move into the room of faith that God desires me to walk in, I've got to pull down these imaginations. 
You ever, you ever uh, uh, lay down at night after watching TV, after uh, having a full day of work, after being with your family or whatever your day may consist of, and you lay down and you try to rest, and sometimes when everything is quiet and everything is silent, your imagination and your mind is still up. Your thought process is still up. How, how, how you're thinking about things, fears and or doubts or the imaginations, we, it, it begins to, so even though things are shut down, if we're not shutting down those imaginations, if we're not shutting down those doubts, if we're not shutting down those fears, those, those places of unbelief in our minds, then it will be hard for us to fulfill the purposes of God of manifesting faith. So this is why I say that our mind is the battleground where wars, wars, notice what I said, wars, are fought and lost. Sometimes we lose wars because of how we think. Because we, we, sometimes we lose battles because of our imagination of how we think. And if we're not calling our minds to be renewed, right, we got to call our minds to be renewed by pulling down those things that have been hindering us for many years. So don't, let's not give the enemy access anymore. So, so I just want to pray before we move. Father, in the name of Jesus, you can repeat this. Father, pull down the imaginations of the flesh. Pull down the imaginations of doubt. Move, oh God, the images of my mind of what I feel like I can't do. Move, Father, the seed of impossibilities out of me that I may move and trust you what you have spoken. Cause my mind to be renewed, God, that I may longer lose no more battles. Let no battles, God, begin to overtake me based upon the fears that I've had and I've walked in the past. I pull them down now in the name of Jesus that I may push into the next place of faith and be developed in the place that you call me to be. So, Father, we speak that our minds will be renewed and revived in you. So we declare and decree these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, that may seem simple, men and women of God, but it's so true because when we are pulling down those imaginations and we're pulling down those images that's ungodly, that's, that's not helping us, it, it feeds the flesh, it feeds the appetite. Now we're allowing, our, we're allowing God's word to saturate us so now we can walk in the place of fulfillment in faith. Amen? So faith is uh, found in two areas. Apostle the one has done a great job talking about faith the last couple of days, so I want to jump in there now. But I felt like I really couldn't jump in there until we first relieve the imagination and pull down those struggles, put on those doubts. They're called them to be out of our life. So now we can move and pursue things that there will no longer be any blockage in us that now God can fulfill his purpose that he wants to do in us. Amen? So we're moving forward now. Faith is found in two areas. Say that with me. Faith is found in two areas. Number one, the first, first place that faith is found is in the heart. Faith is found in the heart. Paul tells us that it is the heart that man believes unto righteousness. Apostle the one I read yesterday, Romans 10 and 10, right? Uh, uh, if you read before that, now that you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart of the Lord Jesus Christ that he died, then you shall be saved. But Romans 10 and 10 says, for, for with the heart, for with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. So faith begins within the heart. Okay? For, for with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. So faith really begins in the heart. She said something yesterday. We talked about the father Abraham. Uh, the Bible says that the Lord spoke to Abram. The Lord was Abram at the time before it changed to Abraham. And he said, Abraham, get away from your kinfolk. Get away uh, from your family, and I'm going to show you a land. 
And so Abraham didn't know what the land was, but the Bible says Abraham believed God. And him believing God, he began to leave where God told him to go. He began to pursue in the direction that God told him to do. And the Bible says God imputed unto Abraham by him believing God that it was righteousness. You know why? Because Abraham believed from the heart. So when God told Abraham, leave your family, leave your kinfolk, and go to the place where I've told you, the reason why Abraham was was able to obey God and move in the place of the righteousness is because he believed from the heart. And when God seen Abraham's heart believe him, he says, Abraham, I'm going to impute that as righteousness. So righteousness to God is when we respond in obedience from my heart. Because what I'm saying, God, my response, you see my response moving in the direction you're calling me to move it in. Why? Because I believe it in my heart. So faith begins in the heart. So men and women of God, what we've got to see is when God speaks to us, even though we may not understand everything that he's saying, even though he may give us direction uh, uh, to a place that we may not know, uh, that it, you know uh, where we're going, but he's going to lead us, we may not have all the answers, but if we believe in our hearts, it will cause us to respond to what God said. Oh, I got to hear me. You got to hear what I just said. I feel the fire of God. It was his heart that believed God. So in order for us to really walk in a place of obedience, right, in a place of harmony or whatever direction God is calling us to walk in, it must come from the heart. Wow. It's got to be from the heart. Because with the heart, Man believes unto righteousness. Ah, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, that out of the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. So my heart has to do with everything connected in my faith. So, so if I'm lacking faith, it's because of what's in my heart. Now, I'm going to take it to another level. Luke, turn to Luke chapter 6. Verse 45, I want, to, I want to take my time before we, you know, before, before we go deeper into this thing, but I want to show you that uh, uh, sometimes what we didn't realize is the condition of our heart has to be affected or effective in order for us to produce faith. So Luke chapter 6, I want to show us this. Luke chapter 6, turn there with me, and I want to start in verse 45. And this is what it says. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, right? A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, Bring it forth that which is evil. Wow. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. So when we speak from the mouth, it's based upon what's in our heart. <laughs> whether it's good conversation, whether it's good productivity, whether it's something productive in the earth, it's based upon my condition of the heart of what I'm releasing from my mouth that's causing me to be who I am. Likewise, a person that is an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. So, so we have to make sure our hearts are open to the place to receive the faith to receive the good treasure that God wants to download in us so we can be in the direction he's calling us to be. Because it starts in my house. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what we declare and decree is based upon what's in the heart. Oh, my God. You got to hear me. I need to say that again. I need to say that again. Um, what we declare 
and decree is based upon what's in our hearts. Oh, God, peace, abundance. What are we declaring decree? So if we're declaring and decreeing something and it's not producing, if there's no productivity in the things of God, if there's no, there's no fruit, if there's no manifestation, I've got to take time to make sure I take inventory of what's in my heart. I've got to make sure my heart is in a place of alignment because my heart is one of the places where faith is found. It's not something you could just say, I think Apostle don't want to talk about a little bit. I can just speak something and don't happen. Well, I never really believed it anyway. No, it's based upon what's my heart because faith has to be produced in the elements of my heart. If faith is not in the heart, it cannot proceed out of the mouth. Ooh, Let me say that one more time. If faith is not in the heart, it cannot proceed out of the mouth, right? If faith is not in the heart, it cannot proceed out of the mouth and be true faith. Wow. Wow. Think about that. So when, when, when the Lord spoke to us and, and he said, if, if you have the faith of the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain. And if you speak to this mountain, this mountain will be removed. So if we're speaking to the mountain and we're speaking from our intellect, nothing happens. Ah, if we're speaking from our mind, nothing happens. If we're speaking just a mist, nothing happens. So what causes that mountain to be moved? And he's talking about the mustard seed. First of all, he's never talking about the size. He said if you have the faith of, of, of the size of a grain, of, of a mustard seed. I found out that the mustard seed is small, but is very powerful, and the potency of the mustard seed won't let anything outside of itself be, be entangled by anything outside the substance. In other words, a mustard seed is so powerful, even though it's small, it's the potential and the power of the mustard seed that makes it great, not the size. So what the Lord was saying, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, not the size, but the potency, oh, my God, the potency, which means nothing outside of that mustard seed can be penetrated by anything of its own, of, of its kind. So if I have mustard seed faith, there's a, there's a power element, right, that, that, that causes me to believe and stand firm in what God told me because nothing can penetrate, nothing, no doubt can penetrate me. No fear can penetrate me. Nothing can move outside of the mustard seed because the potency of it won't let anything penetrate it. Oh, my God, I feel the fire of God. God says, if you have that kind of faith, but it must come out of your heart. If not, nothing will be moved. So we have the faith of a mustard seed in our way, our hearts, and we speak to the mountain. That's when the mountain is moved. Many times, I really believe, we never searched our hearts. What's in our hearts? Who do we trust? What do we trust when it comes to our heart? Do we trust in our hearts the job, or do we trust God's word more? There are some people that trust their parents, there are some people who don't trust their parents based upon how they grow. There are some secrets we can share with our friends that we can't share with our spouses. Why? Because of a lack of trust. I found that there are some people who can tell their friends their secrets more than they can tell their parents. Why? Because they feel more comfortable sharing stuff with their friends, which means I trust this person more than the one who births me. Oh, my God. So, so we never take the time to really check our hearts based upon who we trust and who we don't. So when we hear God's word, do we really trust him? When we hear the preacher, do we really trust 
the word that saturates our heart, that causes something to develop and grow. Wow. Again, faith is not, if faith is not in the heart, it cannot proceed out of the mouth and be true faith. So sometimes that's why we can speak something and it doesn't manifest. It's because we never believed it in the heart. I'm going to let that sink for a minute. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Mm. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So I got to be able to receive it and let it saturate in my heart before I can speak it. Let me say that again. So when I hear, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So when I hear the word of God, right, in my ear gates, I've got to allow it to saturate my heart, right, until it produces something in me. I've got to let the word of God saturate in my heart until it produces something. It's not by chance that the Bible says to us that without faith, it's impossible to please me because what God was really saying to us, what the, the reason why faith pleased me, because there's something in your heart that you believe. We've taken it for granted that it's just a, oh, I just heard the preacher say it, but we never understood the, pro, the, the productivity or the, the process of development of what he was saying. He said, I want my word to be what? Hidden in your heart. Wait a minute. I want, I want my word to be what? I want my word to be hidden in your heart that you may not sing against me. So when I hide the word in my heart, there's something that the word is doing. It saturates me. It causes me to believe God. It causes me to honor God. It causes me to trust God to the point that something is growing and developing in my heart soul that now I don't desire even sin anymore. It causes me to long after the uh, of God so much because something in my heart is being done that it causes me to be persuaded to go another direction than what I used to go to because it's taking root in me. It's almost like putting a seed in the ground. When you put a seed in the ground and you begin to water it, it takes time to develop root. So I've got to let the word of God, when I hear it in my ears, take root in me. Oh, I've got to let it begin to penetrate me so that it brings stability in my heart that now it begins to bring change. And when change happens in my heart, then I can be able to speak a thing and decree a thing and something would happen. I'm moving my head. I'm moving ahead of myself. But let me let me uh, so what I'm saying is faith is founded in two areas. Number one, the heart, and number two, the mouth. Hey God. Say that with me. Faith is founded in two areas. Number one, the heart, after it saturates me, and then number two, the mouth. Because with the mouth, right? But with the heart, man believes them uh, unto salvation. But with the mouth. With, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So when something is birthed in my womb of my heart, then I can open my mouth, hey, God, and I can decree and declare a thing, and it will produce because God is backing it up, because I believe his word. It's not by chance if you read Proverbs 18, 21, which says, death and life, are in the power of the tongue. Wait a minute. So if I allow the word of God in faith to produce in my heart, then with my mouth, death and life are in the power of the tongue or in the power of what I speak. Mm. Because the, the words that we speak put things into motion. Oh, uh, you got to hear what I said. Let me say it again. The words that we speak put things into motion. When words of faith are spoken, 
mountains begin to be removed. Ah, oh, you got to hear what I just said. When, 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 when words of faith are spoken from the mouth, mountains begin to be removed. So because of the word hiding in my heart and producing substance in faith, now I can open my mouth and I can decree and declare. And guess what? When I decree and declare, things move. Wow. So we got to be careful what we speak. We got to be mindful of what we declare. Because death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's why I said the words that we speak put things into motion. So when words of faith are spoken, mountains begin to be removed. Wow. So when we look at the Bible, we look at these dead for men and women of God. What caused Moses being the mouthpiece of God, even though he was leading the children of Israel in the direction God told him to lead, what caused him to have stability is he was able to decree and declare a thing. Come on, y'all. We know that God led them out of Egypt, out of bondage, and they went to the Red Sea, and it looked like they were trapped. And the Lord said, what did you have in your hand? And he said, I got the staff. And, and, and he began to lift up the staff, but he began to open his mouth and declare and decree out of his mouth what the Lord told him, and the what? The waters opened. Oh, God. After they went through the place of the dry ground, right, and they came through a, a symbolic of baptism, and they got on the other side, and the Pharaoh and the enemies came after them. What happened? God told Moses again, not God, but God used Moses. Open your mouth, decree and declare the waters to be the, the waters to, to be closed. And when he opened his mouth, the waters consumed them. It was out of the mouth of the men of God that believe the report of God. Huh, you got to hear what I'm saying. That gave the people victory. Hey, it can be the words that come out of your mouth can empower us so that it can save your family. It can save your community. It can save your church. It can save those who are in your ministry based upon the words of power that's released out of your mouth because your heart has produced faith that God now honors what you speak. So it's not a church thing. It's based on the productivity of allowing my heart to be penetrated so that I now in another place of the element with God that now something is manifesting. Oh, you got to hear what I'm saying. But I got to make sure faith resides in my heart and spoken out of my mouth. So when we hear the word of God, it needs to be planted in our hearts, and as the planted word settles in the heart of the believer, faith give birth. I'm going to say that one more time. When we hear the word of God, it needs to be planted in our hearts, and as the planet word settles in the heart of the believer. Faith gives birth. With faith in the heart, it must also be in the mouth to achieve what it is designed to do. <laughs> I didn't say it again. With faith in the heart, it must also be in the mouth to achieve what it is designed to do. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. And so I don't have to see it to believe it when, when, when it's settled in my heart. Because my, my, my ear gates have heard God speak, 
And because I trust God, I don't have to see the manifestation yet. But I still believe in what he declared. This is the birthing of faith. Now I want to take us into a place dealing with the father of faith, and I really want this to really bless you the way God gave it to me. And I'm going to finish, we're going to, we're going to finish the last 25 or 20 minutes concerning Romans chapter 4. If you have your Bibles turn there, if not, you can listen. I pray that you're listening. So, so there are two areas in us where faith is founded. It's our hearts. And it's our mouth. So let's, let's, take, let's take inventory. Romans chapter 4. I want to take my time, and I want you to see this. And I want to start in verse 17. And it says, Behold. Romans, Romans chapter 4. I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong. I'm sorry, I apologize. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. It says, As it is written, I have made thee, talking to Abraham, the father of many nations. Before him, whom he believed even God, who quickened the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they are or though they were. When faith is manifested in our heart and is released in our mouth, we can speak those things that be not as though they were. You got to hear what I just said. <laughs> We, we, it's amazing in church, we, we quote so many things, but production makes a difference. We have the ability, saints, to speak those things that be not as though they were. Let me give you an illustration for a minute. The prophet Isaiah. It's amazing to me that Jesus Christ was not born or revealed or, or did not yet manifest into the New Testament. So Isaiah being an old prophet, test, old, I mean, old Testament prophet, when he began to talk about the Christ or the coming of the Messiah, he says, by his stripes. Listen to the conversation of Isaiah. Now, here in the Old Testament, Jesus had not yet come. Isaiah says, by his stripes, we are healed. Now, wait a minute. Jesus has not yet manifested. It would have seemed like Isaiah should have said, by his stripes, we will be healed because he had not yet come. Because I'm in the Old Testament, we're waiting for the manifestation of Jesus to arise in the, in, in, in the New Testament, in the, in the gospel. But he didn't say, by his stripes, we will be healed. He said, by his stripes, we are here, healed. He declared and decreed in the Old Testament that right now we are healed by his stripes. I got to hear what I'm saying. He decreed and declared something that was not yet manifested, but spoke it like it existed today. I got to hear what I just said. By his stripes we are healed. That's not a New Testament quote. That's an Old Testament quote from the prophet Isaiah. He spoke it as Jesus Christ had already came and manifested. So when the Bible says, speak those things that be not as though they were, this is an example of what he means. We don't have to wait. It's already done. Oh, yeah, God, did you hear what I'm saying? Oh, God, help me. Help me, Lord. By his stripes, we are healed. Jesus had not yet came, but yet he declared it and he decreed it. Who, glory to God, who am I talking to tonight? There are some things God has downloaded in some of your life that he wanted you to declare and decree, but because how it looked, because, well, I know he said my son can be saved, but see, he's still smoking weed. I see, I know God said that, uh, or she can do this, or, or my, my house will be saved, but when it looks like it's in chaos, see, God don't care about what it looks like. God wants us to believe his report of what he said. And if we believe his report of what he said, it does not matter the condition your child in. It does not matter the situation around your house, how it looks. As long as you declare, decree, and declare what God says and believe him, you can speak it now, and it shall come to pass. Hey, who am I talking to tonight? Speak those things that be not as though they are. He wants to empower us in faith to decree and declare. Hey, God. So I'll read verse 18. Let's go to verse 18 of Romans chapter 4. I pray that I will bless somebody. It says, who against hope believes in hope 
that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, uh uh-oh, and being not weak in faith, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, and he was about a hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. Hold on, let me stop. Let me, let me, let me, let me deal with this before I move on. Abraham said, when God told me about the promise of me having a son, I was 75 years old. But now I'm a hundred. Not only am I a hundred, but my wife is older. So even though we, we're, we're older 25 years later, and, and my wife is 99, getting ready to become 100, I'm 100. Even though the condition of my body is saying a woman can't get birth, even though the condition of my body is going against me, saying I can't produce because of my age, I'm still trusting God, and I'm not looking at the condition of what my body looks like, that I'm still trusting his word. Come on, y'all. Even though my flesh looks dead, even though my wife's womb looks dead, it looks like it can produce, it looks like it's too late. I know God spoke it 25 years ago. It had not yet manifest. I'm still trusting the report of the Lord that he can still do the impossible. Who am I talking to that threw away their dreams because they had not yet come to, get up to fruition and it's been 10 years? God has not forgotten, but do you still believe? My God. He did not stagger. Hey, he was not weak in, in, in his body. He, he, even though my body is weak, I'm not looking at the condition of my body. I'm standing on the word of God. Because in my heart, I still trust him. Woo-hoo-hoo. That in my mouth, when I speak, I'm not speaking about my condition. I'm speaking and reminding him about his word. Come on, y'all. When we pray to God, when we decree a thing, don't speak to God of how you feel. Don't speak to God about your condition. Don't speak to God to what's happening. Speak to God concerning what he said to you or concerning his word. Ah! Because your mouth, based upon your faith and your heart, will begin to say, God, I trust you. God, I believe you. He has not yet manifested. But I'm, not, I'm standing on my watch. I believe you. I trust you until it manifested. So he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. When situations occur, we've got to be strong in faith. How do I be strong in faith? By allowing that word to saturate my heart and make it so when I speak out of my mouth, all the promises that he's ever made in me, all the promises he ever told me. I don't move and give God and tell God about my condition. I remind God about his promises. Hey, God, am I talking to anybody tonight? We've got to remind God about his promises. Promises. That's why God says, without faith, it's impossible to please me. Because what I'm trying to tell y'all, if you let it grow and produce in your heart, my word, your mouth will begin to begin to declare and decree what I want it to. And it'll begin to please me because now I know you trust me. God wants us to, God, God wants to see if we trust him. Our faith moves God because our faith is the indicator that we trust him. Let me say it again. Our faith moves God because our faith in God is the indicator that we trust him. Hallelujah. Do we trust God? Because remember, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. So if I'm going to bring out good treasure based upon what God says, 
It's because I'm allowing his word to saturate my heart. So what I speak gives evidence of what I believe. What I declare out of my mouth manifests evidence if I trust him. What are we speaking? What are we declaring? Hallelujah. This is why God shows us the hall of faith. He said, because all these great people, men or women, by faith, Abraham, by faith, Noah, by faith, Joshua, by faith, Sarah, by faith, by faith. There were people of faith. So if there's a hall of faith that God honors his people, what moves God in our lives is not how much we just pray. It's not how much we just read our Bible. It's our ability to release our faith. It's our ability to declare our faith. God said, wow, you moved me. You moved me because you wouldn't bow. You moved me because you let them put you in the, in the lion's den because you believe me. You, you, you believe me that you allowed them to put you in the fire that even if I don't deliver you because you trust me. They, the reason why they were put in the fire to eat your boys because they believed God. The reason why Daniel was able to go to the lion's den, he believed God. We hear the stories, but what caused these great men and women of God to stand was they trusted God in their hearts. We've got to trust God. And through this pandemic and other situations that may arise in our life, our ability of what we speak begins to declare what's in our hearts. So what's in me? What have I produced when it comes to the next measure, when it comes to the next dimension that God is trying to thrust me in? Do I still trust him even when I don't understand him? Yes, God, I'm going to trust you. So what am I going to do? I'm going to hide more of your word in my heart that I may not echo the wrong thing. I'm going to hide more of your word in my heart that I have stability of what you said and not what I see. Because I want to get to a place, God, that I trust you more than I trust myself. And if we get to that place, men and women of God, there's nothing God will not hold back from you. Here's the father of faith, Abraham, decreeing and declaring, God, I trust in your word. I waited 25 years. Finally, finally, his son comes forth. The promised seed. There we go, Isaac. It is not by chance that now he loves Isaac so because God has finally given him the promise that he has declared and decreed to him all these years. And finally, when the promise has come, God says to Abraham, Son, I want you to sacrifice your son to me. Now, let's, let me build this up. I'm going to close it. This. Let me build this up. Let me, let me show you all something because we hear this so much. Abraham, when he leaves his mother's and his father's house, he's a great man of substance. Right? He, he is a, he, he's a great man of substance. He, he has oxen. He has sheep. He has a lot of men with him. Not only does he have men with him, he has great warriors with him that went to war with him. He, he's leading his wife and his family, but all these men leading him. Then he takes his, his nephew, who has great substance with him as well, as they're leading these people in a direction that the people don't know. Which tells me, which is the indicator, that these men who didn't know God trusted Abraham because he said, I'm going to a place that God is telling me, but I don't know what it is, but I trust them, which means they trusted their leader. They trust their leader. And so now they're moving in faith with the man of God. It takes time to bring production. Now, in the midst of them trusting God, God makes them rich and wealthy. Come on, y'all. God gives them great substance. 
God blesses his hand everywhere he goes. So it's amazing to me that you can have great treasures, you can have great riches, you can have great substance around you, you can have great favor like Abraham did, but those were not the promises. Ha! Ah. Those were just those were just benefits that God gave him. Those were just blessings that God gave him because of his obedience. But the promise was not yet still revealed. Y'all got to hear what I just said. Come on. I, he was still waiting on the promises. We've got to know the difference between our faith being activated to rebuild the promises of God versus just the favor of God. So in the midst of all this favor and blessings and overflow coming to Abraham's life, he finally gets to the place where he received the promise of God, which is his son. But when God comes back to Abraham and he says, Abraham, I need you to give me an offering. What's the offering, God? Is, is, is it my sheep, God? Is it my riches, God? Is it, is it some of my men, God? Is it something in my camp? God says, no, the very thing I want you to give me and surrender to me is the very promise I told you you can have that took a long time to birth. But will you give it to me if I ask? And Abraham Come on, y'all. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. Trusted God more than he trusted the promise that God gave him. Oh, you got to hear what I just said. Hallelujah. I heard a person want to say something powerful, and I don't know if we really caught it. We can give tithes and offerings, and it's good. It's nothing but a principle. Hey, God, we can give wealth, we can give increase, we can give houses, we can give cars. Come on, but it's increase. God said, okay, I may require it of you. But sometimes that's not the ultimate thing that God wants. God said, I want to see if you're able to give me back the promise that I gave to you. Can you give me back your baby that you, that you desire? Can you give me back the thing you love the most? Can you give me that thing that I desire that supersedes your finances? And Abraham was able to still trust God. in the midst of his development, that God, even if you cause me to kill this boy, I still believe you can resurrect him. Hey, God, I still believe you can do the impossible. I don't know the outcome, but I do know one thing, God. I'm going to trust you. Hey. This is why sometimes I heard apostles say that, 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 that faith causes us to be pushed in elements that sometimes that looks impossible. Faith causes us to be pushed by God to move in a direction that we don't understand, that we can't comprehend. And if you tell your family that think you're crazy, you tell somebody in church they'll think you're a fool. Come on, y'all. But there's a place in God where he charges us that supersedes people around us. You can't tell me that Abraham could not have gone to his wife and said, baby, God told me to sacrifice this boy. No, no, I don't believe he did that because this woman probably would have died. This woman waited almost 100 years to finally receive the promise. There are some places in God that he requires of us that's so personal that we can't tell other people about it, but yet we got to be obedient to what he wants in faith. I just said something that I felt something unlocked. Hey, God, it's not made for everybody, but this is for that leader that God is pushing you. He's telling you to do something that seems contrary to what church has told you, but yet you said, God, I don't understand what they're going to think. He said, well, what about Mary? Did not you understand that Mary, in the midst of all her people, in the midst of the Jews being the promised people, that when the angel came to her, he said, listen, God has favored you. Matter of fact, he favored you so much, Mary, that I'm going to impregnate you with the Holy Ghost. Wait a minute, Mary. He says, I'm a virgin. People know that in my village, if a woman is pregnant, right, without a husband, they are to be stoned to death. God went against, right, the principles that they held as his people, as a Jewish nation. So God did the impossible. He says, Mary, I know that seems contrary to what the believers say, but I'm still going to give you the Holy Ghost and I'm going to pregnant you. That when he gave her, right, impregnated her with Christ, when she went to her husband or her fiancé, even Joseph said, woman, you sound like a fool. And he was about to put away privately because it didn't make sense. God would tell us something that seemed like it don't make sense that even the whole nation would think you're a fool. Ah, oh, you got to hear what I'm saying. And it wasn't until the Holy Ghost in a dream gave Joseph insight that, no, Joseph, Mary ain't crazy. Still marry her because what she has is the Holy Ghost. There are some people who can't walk with you in a place of faith without it being revealed by the Holy Spirit. I just said something. My God. 
Woo-wee! Hey! God in faith can challenge us to such a degree that it has seemed controversial. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. This is why faith must be birthed in our hearts and produced out of our mouth that even if it doesn't move other people around us, it will keep me in a place of stability, still trusting God when people around me may doubt. Come on, y'all. Hey, God. So faith for me is important to keep me in a place of hope and stability, even when others may not understand, even if I got to walk through the alone like Mary. But he finally, Joseph came back to himself because she was carrying something she was impregnated with that didn't come from the earth. What did God decide to impregnate you with something that didn't come from the earth? Ah! But it came from the spirit, and what you're birthing, what you're carrying, is something greater than what you can comprehend, and now the craving on the inside of you has caused you to seek after something you don't understand. It's because this is baby. (laughs) And he's trying to produce it and push it in your life. If you can grab what I just said, well, I can't go no higher than I really want to go. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. That God honored Abraham's soul in my closing. He said, Abraham, I'm going to honor you so much that not only in the flesh will I give you the promise, but now people who come to Jesus cannot even get to Christ without the Abraham covenant. Because the Abraham covenant is based upon faith. This is why Abraham is the father of the circumcision and uncircumcision. He's the father of the Jews and the Gentiles. So all the saints who come to Christ, they got to go through the symbolically through Abraham, right? The, the promise of, 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 of faith, him being the father of faith, to get to Christ. It's through the Abraham covenant. In other words, God began to honor him so that he says, people got to come through you through the spirit because you're the father of faith. You got to move glory to God. So Abraham had a natural child, but he also got spiritual children, symbolically, that he brings to Christ. This is why when Jesus came, he said, you're not the children of Abraham. Because you're the children of Abraham, you will believe me. Catch what I just said. There's a covenant with God to those who are connected with him, that he honors because the faith walk that Abraham had, that even when Jesus was upon the cross, and he said to, the, to, the, to one of the men on the cross, this day you shall be with me in paradise. Because the waiting place before Christ came and died and took the keys of death and hell was in Abraham's bosom. Come on, y'all. That's how much God honored the man, the, the, the father of faith, that the waiting place for, for, until Christ came was Abraham's bosom. God will honor you so that your honor supersedes the earth. <laughs> I wish I had time. My God. That the honor he has for you will now thrust into another dimension. Ah, because of the faith walk that this man had. So even though it looked like it took a long time, the productivity that God brought in his life and in his loyalty was greater than what we see because we just think about the son in the flesh, but there was daughters and sons that were birthed in the spirit. Another element that was released because he made him the father. Hallelujah. Hey, God, I give you praise. So I thank God tonight for this word. I pray, hallelujah, I pray that you, now when you hear the preacher, right, when when you hear the preacher, let the words of what's spoken settle on your heart. Let it give root, let it give birth, that the next time you open your mouth, there's an agreement, there's an empowerment, there's a substance on the inside of you that when you declare and decree a thing, it ain't you declared it by yourself, but the heavens are backing you up because faith has been released 
out of your mouth. And as faith is in your heart and has been released out of your mouth, those mountains that's been in your way, those mountains that's been in your life, those barriers that's been in your life, those fears that's been in front of you, those disappointments that's been around you, they have to be moved. Ha! Ha! Hey, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. So walk by faith and not by sight. Move to the next element. Move in the next dimension of what he's calling you to. Move to the next measure. Move to a deeper depth and higher height. Let him saturate you in his word. Stand on his promises and begin to decree and declare out of your mouth and come into agreement based upon the word or the promises that God has uttered in your ears that John, you can utter out of your mouth and watch him perform it. And if it doesn't perform at the time of mind that we wanted to, we still will not stagger through unbelief, but will be strong in faith, knowing that he's able to perform that which he has spoken. So, Father, we thank you tonight. We praise you tonight. We honor you tonight. We glorify your name. We thank you for this impartation. We thank you for this declaration that we are children of faith. We are children that are productive. We are children that are, hey, God, that are moving to another dimension in you. We are children, oh, God, that get inhabited by you and your spirit to decree and declare as your sons and daughters. Thus, what says the Lord, we will stand firm on what the promises of God has been in our life, and we trust you more than we trust ourselves. We honor you, and we pray that you will continue to bless us, that you continue to keep us, that you continue to thrust us into a place that's impossible beyond the man, that's impossible beyond the earth. But in you, all things are possible, and we give you praise tonight. We give you glory. And we declare it so in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. At this time, I turn over to Apostle Dewan Jackson. Hallelujah. As we begin, we turn over to her. God bless you. Thank you for those who are on the line. Amen. Such a powerful teaching on tonight. I know that you all were tremendously blessed, even as I was tremendously blessed by this powerful word. Uh, that was given on tonight by the man of God. We do want to um, as well extend those that would like to sow a seed. You can sow a seed to um, wov960 at yahoo.com, which is our PayPal account, or you can sow a seed to um, the cash app of Dwan YJ, um, cash app Dwan YJ, and we'll make sure that it goes to the man of God. We thank God for this powerful teaching. I'm telling you, it was an activation in the spirit, and he really went up there, amen, very quickly, amen, he really began to soar, um, talking about faith and thrusting us into this next level and next dimension, so I pray that each and every one of you have been challenged and stirred in your spirit on these three nights of Word Explosion Part 2, um, those of you that want more impartation and teaching, please let us know, um, as we'll be in prayer concerning what the Lord wants us to do. Um, concerning uh, these next couple of weeks of May um, before we know everybody will be kind of resuming into their um, schedules as um, cities and places, uh, states are opening up. But we do want to stay empowered. We want to stay connected in unity and in faith. We want to stay connected to be able to function and fulfill uh, this mandate that God has given us um, collectively and individually. And so